And boy, he was super, he or she, whatever, really gave me some good stuff right there. That was awesome. You see it? I take it back. There's no way you can see that uh, on this wide angle lens. But there's a great gray owl out here. I'm super psyched to find this owl. As always, I love, love, love these great gray owls. I just found it. And uh, it already, is, you know, it's letting me know it's totally cool with me being here. It's like resting and chilling. Doesn't seem to be bothered by me at all. I've got two hours of light left. Even with the 402.8 here, this beautiful piece of equipment, the Nikon Z9 with the 402.8 Z lens. Um, so even at f2.8 out here, it gets dark so fast in these woods. You can see there's still quite a bit of light punching through the woods here. So this owl, hopefully it starts moving around and hunting and it'll be kind of in and out of this light. So exposure is going to be tricky going from like direct sunlight into just dark, uh, deep forest shade in here. So it could be a little tricky, which is fine. Like I love this kind of dramatic pocketed kind of light. And I'm going to watch this owl and see if it starts hunting and then I'll get back to you. Because right now there's not much to talk about other than just the pure joy of being alone in the woods with a great gray owl. There's really not a photo to be made yet. Uh, so I really want to just kind of lay low, let it do its thing and start hunting and moving from perch to perch, flying around and giving me some more interesting opportunities than on a just kind of mediocre perch. Here. right up and landed right in front of me after catching a little bull to go for something in the grass. Ooh, now he's on a killer perch too. Gotta find an angle to get through these trees. Ooh, look at that. See him up there? Dude, I gotta put this down and make some photos. That's awesome, beautiful. was a killer, like two minutes of owl photography. That was awesome. And now I lost him. He flew through the woods where I couldn't, oh, he's right there. I was say, I thought to say, he flew through the woods where I couldn't see him, but I do see him out there. So even better. Uh, light was, it's that like super contrasty pocketed spotlight in the forest light it was incredible. Just gorgeous. I, I need to find a path to get around to him here. Just in the forest, you know? All right, I'm gonna keep going.
That was awesome, awesome couple of minutes. After waiting about an hour for him to come, uh, come alive there and uh, wake up and start hunting. And boy, he was super, he or she, whatever, really gave me some good stuff right there. That was awesome. Hope it continues. This is so hard. Trying to shoot video for the vlog, trying to vlog and trying to make photos. Uh, it's so hard, but so much fun. Okay, I'll check back in. I gotta go get in location, get set up again. Hi, we're back here in front of the computer. And uh, I did a video similar to this a couple of weeks ago where I go through the whole image making process from start to finish in the field, uh, which you just saw that process, and then back to the computer to edit the photos. And I selected the two photos that I showed you in that intro segment. Uh, and we're gonna just run through and process those two photos real quick and show you my process of how I go through these. And I do jam through these reasonably quickly because I shoot a lot of photos uh, and I don't particularly love being in front of the computer versus being out in the field. So I'd rather spend my time out there when possible. Uh, and in general, for sharing images on the web, on Instagram, and even on YouTube videos, uh, uh, my opinion is that they don't need to be perfect uh, because you lose so much of the perfection in um, you know, the compression and the small viewing screens and stuff. So uh, I blow through these relatively quickly. And then when I have somebody that wants to buy a print, I'll dive back into them and really go through them and make them as nice as I can possibly make them. These won't be as nice as I can possibly make them. They'll be like, you know, 80% of the way there, but it only takes me, you know, it's that 80-20 rule where I can put in 20% of the effort and get 80% of the benefit. Uh, and then if I really need it uh, to be as good as I can make it, I have to put in that extra time to finish those up. So uh, that's my caveat there that uh, this is not like the best way to do it, but this is a way that works for me in terms of, you know, churning through a bunch of images uh, so that I can post an image on Instagram every day and, you know, post a handful of images on each YouTube video. And uh, it's just a lot of images to plow through. So let's get started. So this first one was when that owl had flown up and landed really close to me. Uh, and this is full frame here with the 400 millimeter 2.8 lens. Uh, so let's go ahead and dig in here. So right now this is as shot and uh, you know I was pretty much full frame there at 400 millimeters so uh, it was no problem. The camera picked up on the owl's eye and it you know it hit it perfect focus on the eye. Um, I was shooting this at 400 millimeters wide open at f2.8. I had ISO 1600 uh, set up and two thousandth of a second. So I was set up for flight shots, which that bird did fly in and he landed there. And I made a couple of real quick frames as he just landed on that thing to make sure I got some images while he was there. Now, if he had stayed there for a little longer, I would have turned down. Sorry, that wasn't a, uh, that was my um, chair squeaking. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, he, uh, if he had sat there longer, I would have dropped that ISO down to get a little bit lower noise image. And I, you know, had a, uh, you know, 400th of a second would have been plenty there to get a nice sharp frame. But uh, once he landed, I still had my settings from the flight and I made some images and then luckily he turned and flew right away. Uh, so if I had been fiddling with settings and trying to, you know, drop my ISO and make sure the exposure is perfect and everything, uh, I would have missed this opportunity. So uh, that's kind of the deal out there where I've got to prioritize, you know, getting a shot versus getting all my settings exactly perfect because uh, situations like this typically don't last very long. And I probably only had two seconds um, from when this owl landed here, kind of looked around and then flew off again. 
So I was able to make this image relatively quickly. So right out of the gate here, my thought process is that the, the image, I love the dark background here, but I think the owl is a little bit too, too dark as well. Um, and I also think the color is a little bit too blue. So I had shot this uh, in cloudy on the camera, which is a relatively warm setting, but here in the shade of the forest, I think that was a little too cool. So I'm just gonna go straight to my white balance here in Lightroom and change it to shade, which is even warmer than cloudy. Uh, and I think that actually looks really good. You know, th this color is pretty neutral. It's maybe just a hair warm, uh, which is fine. Um, anyway, I like that much better just to go straight to shade there. Now I'm gonna just crank up the exposure of the whole image here because with that background being so dark, uh, I don't think it's going to brighten up very much, but I do want to brighten up the owl. So uh, it is bringing out a little more of the green of the background, which I like a lot. And a half a stop. I think I'm going to stay right there. Half a stop looks good. Um, but I do feel like that brought up the brightness of the background a little too much. Um, and I'm going to add in some contrast here a little bit. That'll darken it back down and also punch up the bright whites, you know, around the owl's face down here and its eyes a little bit. So I'm going to actually go a little more. I, I went plus 25 there and I like the way that's headed. Uh, 50 seems a little high. So I'm just going to land on 40 points of added contrast. And I think overall it, it looks amazing. There's a little situation up here in the corner that I want to deal with, uh, a bright spot of some light kind of filtering through the forest uh, that I'm going to try and darken down in a minute. Um, but in the meantime, I'm also going to, I'm going to add some clarity, or not clarity, texture to the whole image here. And that's just to help bring out the feather detail. This photo is a lot, a lot, a lot about the detail of the bird and the feathers. And so... I think it is important to help emphasize that. I'm just going to go up 20 points on texture, and that'll add just uh, you know a little bit more texture. This feather detail is incredible in here, uh, so that extra detail setting is going to punch that up a little bit. It looks great. Uh, let's see, what else can I do to this? Uh, I mentioned I want to darken this area down here in the upper right corner, that bright spot. So I'm going to go up here into uh, my masking tool and I'm going to do a brush. And first I'm going to attack this super bright spot up there. So I'm just going to brush over that. I'm going to hit it with highlights, negative 100. Uh, and then I'm going to drop its exposure down till, till it's roughly the same as this area that's next to it. And then I'm going to create another mask with another brush, and then I'm going to re-hit that whole area and, and do basically the same thing. I'm going to take the highlights down 100, and then I'm just going to drop the exposure until, you know, its brightness maybe matches some of the other little stuff up there. So it's not drawing my eye away from anything. And that looks about right to me. So that's just using some darkening there to make that go away. And I didn't really love that. It kind of pulls your eye away from the owl a little bit. So uh, anyway, super simple to just knock that brightness down a little bit and call that good. Now, to be completely honest here, th this is where I this is where I end uh, for for this for what I need this photo for for Instagram and for YouTube, even for my website. This is really good. Um, I would run this if I was going to print it. I would do things a little bit differently. Uh, I would probably run it through a little denoising, maybe topaz denoise a little bit. Uh, it's plenty sharp. I don't think it needs any sharpening, but uh, I would spend a little more time with it, kind of fine tuning things and just make sure it's perfect for printing. But this is it. Um, I'm, I'm done with that image. Okay, so that's it. I love it. Um, it's, it, you know, it was nice soft light, but beautiful contrasty situation with a dark background and a relatively lighter colored bird on a nice perch. I didn't even have to crop this one. It was just full frame. That's how it was shot. Okay, so here we are with the second image. And this one is 
was kind of much trickier lighting conditions, and I think it will require a little bit more editing. But the trickier lighting conditions is because this one had direct sunlight filtering through the trees and stuff on part of the perch and on the bird as well. Uh, and I love, love, love the lighting here, but uh, this one does need a little bit more work than the other one. And uh, so when I look at this, thankfully, I underexposed this enough. This was, again, you saw in that video where I had maybe 15 seconds where that bird was on the perch. And in that 15 seconds, I was shooting a vlog and I had to get uh, my little overhead camera set up to shoot the wide scene. And then I had to get the bird framed the camera rotated to vertical, uh, and then try and get my settings as close as I could get them while making sure I got a photo before it flew off. So I did not have much time to really nail this thing perfectly, and, and we'll talk about that in the settings here in, in just a minute. Um, but I underexposed it enough that I knew I would have a usable photo, because if I had blown out any of the pixels in the bird or in that perch, then it's a goner. I can't recover that stuff. So I definitely erred on the side of being too dark. And this type of situation, it's very, very, very easy to overexpose these bright parts where that spotlight is hitting and you've got a dark background. So the, the settings here are going to be a little weird because it was a weird setup. This one, I had engaged the teleconverter, um, so that turned my lens into a 560 millimeter f4. So this one was shot wide open at f4. Uh, I was still at ISO 1600 because I had been photographing that owl in the shade, uh, and I did not change that. I know I can get a lovely image quality at ISO 1600. Um, that I did not prioritize lowering that down. If I had had time, I would have dropped that down probably to 200 or 400, which would give me a slightly better uh, quality image, but I might have missed the whole shot altogether because I was fiddling with things. Okay, so I just cranked in, I walked up, and I don't even remember what I cranked in, but I probably cranked in minus two on exposure compensation. Uh, as I was lifting the camera to my eye, I'm just dialing that in because I know this scene the dark background wants to be dark, 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 and I don't want to overexpose those highlights. So uh, the camera came up with one ten thousandth of a second ISO 1600 f4. Uh, so that's a very odd setting. It's a very high shutter speed that I didn't need to be that high. But the good news is, is I actually got the photo before the bird flew away. And after this photo, the, bloop, the bird flew within four or five seconds after that. So uh, it all worked out great. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a shot that's darn close. Um, and I actually made the shot versus missing the shot because I was worried about getting my settings exactly right. But anyway, let's, let's go to the image here. Let's look at it. So right out of the gate here, I did a reasonably good job of framing the image. Uh, but I do feel like I need to crop this one a little bit. Uh, the trunk of this old tree is a little bit out of vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this thing and try and get that this edge over here to be pretty vertical. And that, meanwhile, I'm also kind of looking at his eyes there. Like if his eyes are perfectly vertical... You know, you could consider that being more important than the verticality of the tree. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere in the middle there. Uh, I've got a, enough of a gap up top here that as I rotate, I'm going to try and reclaim as much down here as I can because I, I can afford to lose some of that up there. But not much. You know, if, if I tried to get that too close, you know, then I'm pushing that too close to the edge for my personal taste. So I like to give that some room to breathe up above the owl there. But so that would be the most I could do. You know, I could tighten that up a little bit, but not much. I want to give it room to breathe. And ideally, you know, some symmetry between the top, uh, from the top of the bird to that frame versus the right edge of the bird to that frame should be pretty darn close. And that kind of symmetry should work pretty well. So I like that. I'm going to pinch it in just a tiniest bit more. Uh, but anyway, there's my crop. So there's my starting point. That all looks good. Now I got to start dealing with some of the light. So first thing out of the gate, let's talk about the color, the white balance here. 
Again, this was shot at cloudy and I'd like to warm it up a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to take it straight to shade. Uh, and that's too, too warm. So that it worked on the last image. The shade worked really well because the bird actually was in shade. This one, I, I don't think it works as well because the bird is catching some direct sunlight. And so I think it's a little too warm. So I'm going to drop that down. Let's just take a nice round number to 7,000. And that actually, I think, maybe is a hair... Let's take it down to 6750. So I like that. That's a little more neutral, but it still has a warm glow as in, you know, like uh, an evening light, which this was, is nice and warm. And so we're getting that evening light filtering through the forest. So I think that looks really good. Okay. Uh, so now I've got, it's cropped. I got the white balance set correctly. Now I think the, the image overall is underexposed, which is what my intention was so that I wouldn't accidentally blow out those highlights in that few seconds that I had to make the image. Uh, I'm going to just take this up a half a stop brighter and see how that looks. And it already looks better in most parts of the image. Uh, it's making this part of the bird a little bit too bright. I'm going to deal with that later, but I do like how it brought out more detail in the trunk down here and a little bit more detail on the bird. Uh, I'm going to kind of treat this similar to the last one where I might crank up the, the uh, contrast a little bit. I'm going to go 25 points. That's going to darken the background and brighten up this bright stuff as well. So I like the look of that at 25 points. Uh, but now I want to try and manage some of this extra bright stuff. So the, the brightest pixels in the frame, none of these are blown out according to the histogram. But just to taste, I think they're too bright. So I'm going to take the white slider and I'm going to just start dropping that thing down until it looks pretty good. Like even at minus 100, it looks pretty good but I'll just pull it back to minus 50. I don't see much of a difference between minus 50 and minus 100. But that'll just take the uh, a little bit of the brightness out of these brightest parts. Um, what else? I think overall, this is how I want the image to look, but now I need to tune up a couple of little parts. Uh, I want to darken down this part of the owl's feathers that are catching direct light that's really bright, and I want to brighten up its face a little bit. Uh, and my thought here is to darken this uh, enough that it's darker than this. I kind of want the owl's face to be the brightest thing in the image. So I want to darken this down, and I want to at least as dark as this bright part of the stump, and I want to lift up the brightness of the owl's face to be about that bright as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open that masking tool. Uh, I'm going to just grab a brush. And I don't need to be very precise here at all because I'm just going to deal with the highlights. So even though I've overlapped here into the dark stuff, I'm really not going to even touch that dark stuff with, uh, with my adjustments here. So I'm just going to go ahead and crank these. Let's just, I'm just going to take the highlights all the way to minus 100 and see how that looks. It's too far. So uh, now I'm, I found what's too far, and then there's about zero. I'm just going to kind of play with it until it looks about right. Yeah, I mean, minus 25 looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to take it a little darker. Let's go minus 35 there. And that looks pretty good. So now, to me, this doesn't feel any brighter than this which is what I wanted for part one. Now part two is I wanted the owl's face to be brighter. So I'm gonna grab a new brush and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna to be too precise here, but I'm just gonna kind of brush in the darkest parts of this bird and definitely his face. And I'm just gonna grab the exposure slider and just crank it and see where it starts to look good. Like it's already looking so much better at plus one. It looks great. And so I'm at plus 1.5 now, and I do feel like this is similar in brightness to this now. So this isn't kind of stealing all the attention away, but I do love this, uh, this old perch. So I don't want to get rid of the attention on that as well, but I do want this to be a higher priority. So I want to brighten that up. And I definitely want this part of the owl's face brighter than this part of the owl's tail. Okay, so... 
I'm, I'm just happy with that. An ex exposure of 1.5. Uh, you know, I could even just add a little texture to that owl's face. I'm just going to add 20 points of texture to that owl's face. Um, that'll help bring up just a little bit of detail in its face only, which can also help kind of grab your eye a little bit. It's just going to be a little, little crispier, a little sharper than the rest of the photo that helps draw your eye there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at that. I'm just going to study it for a minute and see if there's anything I'm missing. Mm. No, uh, I would consider this a finished image. So this would then go onto Instagram and, and into this video as well. And uh, that's about as far as I'm going to take these. Uh, and I can blow through these much quicker when I'm not talking about it. But uh, that's my image editing process on these. Um, and especially coming from two images that neither one of them had like perfect settings the way I would have really liked to have shot them in the field. Um, both of them I could have shot at lower ISO and both of them could have been shot a little bit brighter and both of those would have decreased the noise. Not that there's much noise in these anyways, um, but they could have been a little bit better. But if I was fiddling with things, I would have missed both shots because they both happened in a matter of seconds. And that's how it often goes out there. So uh, I'm thrilled that I got the images and I'm thrilled that they were close enough that I didn't need to do much to, uh, to get them to where they're ready to go out into the world. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's my process out here. And uh, I hope that's helpful to people. I hope this is an enjoyable video. Uh, I had a lot of requests for more like the one I did with the backlit elk a couple, a few weeks ago. So I'm going to continue to do some of these. Uh, people seemed like I got a lot of feedback, both in the comments and some emails and stuff uh, from people saying that they really learned a lot from those uh, and that it was helpful to see the process there of how to get through things in a simple and quick way. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, speaking of images, you know, I talk about redoing these when I print. Um, check out my print shop at shop.stevemathis.com. And uh, I redid that. So it's now much easier to order prints and uh, I lowered my prices a little bit. Uh, and so, I'd appreciate it if you guys, uh, you know, want to support the channel and support my photography, uh, go pick up a print. Um, Christmas is coming. Um, and maybe you have an extra wall in your house that could use a beautiful print. But uh, anyway, so thanks for your support. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I'll see you next time. Take care.